Ann Welton, president of the Wake Forest Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much, Ann. You were one of the first people I met when I was coming downtown. And I was telling you earlier, I had no idea what the chamber did as an outsider coming in, owning a business. But you're for everybody, the whole town, right? We are. Our, uh, our mission is actually represent business, serve community, and enhance the quality of life here in Wake Forest. And really, my personal belief, and I think a lot of chambers as well, know that we must have a strong business community if we're going to have a great quality of life. Businesses hire employees, uh, there's more money in the community, there are people that can afford to donate to nonprofits, they've got time to spend, they've got energy to spend. So a strong business community is really the catalyst to having a great community overall. And I really think we do, don't you? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, there's so much to do and see. And it, you know what, having a unique community makes all the difference in the world. I went to Denver and I was walking down the main street of Denver and there was a Starbucks next to a TJ Maxx across the street from a CVS and then there was a Target and Old Navy. I don't want our town to look like that. No. And though it's nice to have those conveniences and certainly mm -hmm. we represent businesses across Wake Forest, not just in the downtown area. And, um, you know, let's face it, some of those larger stores are great and they're um, convenient for mm -hmm. many reasons, but having the charm and having locally owned businesses and really people who are in our community all working together to make a great place to live makes all the difference for sure. So, Anne, where did you grow up? I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, ah. and I uh, went to the University of Virginia in Charlottesville and then traveled quite a bit with my husband um, with his work took us to Kansas for a while, Louisville, Kentucky for a while, and then I had an opportunity with a job to move to Wake Forest, and we were anxious to get back to the East Coast, and um, have been here ever since, and just love it. I do too. I love the East Coast. It's home. Yes, it yeah. is. It is. Even though you're from the Northeast Coast. Yeah, but this is home. My yeah. parents lived in Virginia right before I was born, so oh. it's... We're almost like related. Yeah, I think we are. <laughs> I felt like that as soon as I yeah. met Yeah. You're fun. Um, so what are the things that you do? I know you run a women's group, which I find very supportive because I think women need to lift each other up, not knock each other down. That's very, very important to me. And I think it's important to you and you show it. How do you do that? Uh, well, our Women's Business Alliance is a subset of the chamber. So they are professional women that are part, members of their businesses are members of the chamber. And it's been one of the most satisfying things that I've worked on here since we've been here. Uh, it has grown so much that we can no longer meet here in the chamber office, which is fun. Um, and we do every other month personal or professional development and then every other month a social because as you know, we all love to get together and talk. But it is one of the most supportive, open, uh, interesting groups that I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done several events that we call need working events where people share something they need and it doesn't even have to be professional. It could be I need a recommendation for a great restaurant when I travel to Nashville. I mean they're just whatever it might be and women are practically falling all over each other to help. I know someone you need to know. Yes. I've got a connection for you. So it is definitely an atmosphere of lifting each other up, finding ways to make those connections. And being friends. And being friends. I mean, I don't know. I've got four sisters, so I grew up in a very female family, but I can never have too many girlfriends. So mm -hmm. I think no matter how old we are, we all love to sur surround ourselves with uh, people that are like us. And um, people, well, let's hope very soon we can get back together and yeah, well. I miss that day to day contact. Even just giving people a hug makes a big difference. Has this been hard on you with your, the pandemic? Oh, it's been really hard. I'm definitely one of those people that one of the reasons I love my job is every single day is talking to people. Mm -hmm. um, we've had at a high point about 700 different businesses that were members of the chamber. Unfortunately, we've lost some through this pandemic, but still there was lots and lots of day-to-day -day conversation and, and making those connections. And I don't want it to sound like this is just a chamber for women. Uh, we have a great women's organization, mm -hmm. but <laughs> certainly men and men businesses are uh, very important to us as well. And I think that's one thing that we, we really do well is make those connections for people. So if there's someone that you need to, to you'd like to meet or there's a referral you need or just to we create environments for people to get together and make their own connections. Um, but because that's what happens. People do business with people they know. Yes. And uh, we provide we that trust. opportunity and trust. 
Absolutely. You were pivotal when we were moving because you got us a rental truck. The, they were chamber members and they mm -hmm. gave us a deal because we had to move twice. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> but you gave us a lot of insight and help and you could go to this person and this person and every single person took care of us because we were chamber members. I have really worked hard to create a culture of, we call it think chamber, but to have the whole community think to go to chamber member for whatever their business needs or personal needs are, mm -hmm. but especially within the chamber, let's support the members that are supporting the community through the chamber. And we have, by virtue of having so many members, almost anything you need, there's a chamber member that can do that for you, whether it's a service or a product. And actually studies have been done across the country that businesses that join chambers have um, very good business practices, they're ethical, uh, they have great customer service, and it's true. No one's gonna take the time to join a chamber and then run off with your money in the middle of the night. I mean, yeah. these are good people who take the time and invest their dollars in the work of the chamber. Mm -hmm. And they wanna be involved in something that's bigger than they are. How many people do you have working for you? We have seven. That's a big organization. Yeah, it really is. And, yeah. um, we also have a foundation. It's our nonprofit foundation that is really working hard to create the business leaders of the future. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of work with I high school that. students. Mm -hmm. We have a career readiness academy. You've had interns. We've had, and one of my favorite is Sasha. Uh, one oh, no, Paige. Oh, Paige. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, she was wonderful. But we're, we're really working hard with leadership programs, entrepreneurship mm -hmm. programs, career readiness, financial literacy, all the, all the elements that a student needs to really embrace in order to be a business leader in the future, whether they're gonna own their own business or just be a great employee. Mm -hmm. And um, I really think that's the future of the work here at the Chamber to make sure that we are not only supporting business owners like yourself that are already in business, but creating that uh, workforce pipeline so that you've got great employees that want to work for you. Yes. So how do you go about doing that and picking the people? Because I know it's a process. It is. And fortunately, we've got a couple of great staff members that really manage. And volunteers, too. There's lots of volunteers, yeah. too. Uh, there's an application process for high school students to um, participate in both our Youth Leadership and our Career Readiness Academy. Um, they apply, we interview them. This year was all done via Zoom and it worked out beautifully. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're starting those programs this fall virtually and with the hopes that very soon they'll get to meet each other in person. But uh, at the end of the school year, uh, we'll have quite a number again of classes of high school students that know more about themselves, know more about the working world and uh, know more about leadership. So it's, it's really satisfying. The one that came with me, and I was just talking about earlier, she um, also did the lead up program. Oh. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's amazing. And uh, do you have a part in that? Which is you can explain that too. It's um, a people you you help businesses get their feet on the ground too, and help them like become more of a business, even if you're already open. Do you mean? Um... I'm stuttering for words because I didn't sleep last night. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm Launch Wake Forest. Yes, Launch yes. Wake Forest. We, had, we did. We partnered with Rotary and the town of Wake Forest and Wake Tech for those Yeah, programs. that was so good. And they are fantastic. It's mm -hmm. great curriculum. It's an eight-week program for and it's entrepreneurs. Free. Yep. Yeah. It's all funded through Wake Tech, so it's a great opportunity for a fledgling business or even business that's been in business for a while mm -hmm. but wants to take it to the next level. It really helped us get our head in the game. Yeah. So I love that, and I can't remember the name now because because again, no, right. sleep is good. yeah, sleep is really <laughs> needed. So, what do, what else do you offer here for businesses? Yeah, I know I can use this conference room. Yes. Yes, which um, is beautiful, by the way. Kind of a mess at the moment. No, but if there's big windows. It's warm. It's inviting, and you have programs and meetings here. We do yourself. We have we have lots of educational programs. Um, in fact, we're, we've done two out of three live stream webinars just in September um, with Grow with Google, and uh, teaching businesses how to take their business online, making sure they're using all the tools that are mm -hmm. available to them. We've got one coming up in a couple of weeks on the holiday season to make sure that you're using everything that you can online to make sure you have a successful mm -hmm. holiday season if you're a retailer. 
So we offer all kinds of educational programming like that. Uh, early in the pandemic, we were doing um, events based around the PPP, the loan that a lot of small businesses access through the Small Business Association. Mm -hmm. So we do everything from marketing kinds of educational to those very specific running your business. Yeah. Um, we have all kinds of marketing opportunities for businesses if they want to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. um, sponsorship of some of our events. Um, we have a golf tournament coming up and, you know, those things. I joke about the fact that it's the law that you have in your <laughs> chamber, you have to have a golf tournament. It really is fun. Um, so we provide opportunities for people to grow their businesses, whether it's through marketing, whether it's through relationship building and connections or advertising or education, things that they need to learn how to do better or may not know how to um, find out those resources. So we we have members that range from you know huge corporations with thousands and thousands of employees to page 158 books who does not have thousands of employees and everyone in between. Mm -hmm. So we try to offer a broad range of resources and support. Um, and we're just here. We know yeah. people. We're connected with uh, elected officials and we're at the municipal level as well as at the state level. Um, not so much at the federal level, but we still know who to call if you yes. have an issue. So um, we advocate for business when there's legislation that we need to you know, jump up and down about. So we can make those connections across the board. For yeah, you. and you've been really helpful with us too because you don't know what you're doing and all of a sudden we were in a pandemic mm -hmm. and that's where I started not knowing what I was doing because you had to change the wheel every day and again at 52 I, it's hard for me to learn all these things but you're offering tools and advice and what are the trends that you see going forward through Christmas uh, if more retail online in, yeah, yeah if you're not online with everything working it, I don't think you're gonna have a great season um, whether um, I mean, I just hate to say that, but I think it is the wave of the future and having seamless um, opportunities for your customers to both shop and purchase online, I think is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. You, Page 158 Books, has done a great job. I've, I've ordered books online. I've yes. picked them up curbside. You've delivered them to my house. These are all the things that a year I ago... I never thought I'd be no, doing. No. No. But you have been able to do that, and I think everyone needs to look at their business model. What they were doing in 2019 is not the way no, of the not. future. Um, all of us who live and work in downtown Wake Forest are probably famil familiar with Dino Radasta, owner of White Street Brewing Company, and I interviewed him early on in, in all of this, and what he said really stuck with me. He was like, people who are looking to just reopen are not going to be successful. It needs to be taken into consideration the economic and physical environment that we have today mm -hmm. and think about if I was going to open a brand new store today, what would I do? How would I approach it? And that's the that's the way we need to be looking at things because it's never going to be the way it was a couple of years ago. So, mm. um, and I'm not, that's not even depressing. That's just yeah. like, it's a brand new opportunity. What can you do? How, how can, how can you do we do it better? Exactly. Yes. exactly. And I think as a business owner, you always have to be doing that. So this is a, a awakening for us. Yeah. And now with Christmas coming, we're telling people to shop, shop early. Yes. Because all of the, you know, the funnels coming in with the products, I mean, shelves are empty sometimes, you know, get your stuff early. Well, it's interesting. I, I'm a, I, I, I really like to ride my bicycle and earlier this spring there was not a bicycle to be found yeah. in all of I mean, Wake Forest for sure I don't know about the, the entire country mm -hmm. I mean I already had a bike but if someone took a picture of the Walmart shelves and then there yeah. was not one single bike in there mm -hmm. I mean so there or are, chicken yeah <laughs> But so, and then so, as you are saying, you know, for the holiday season, if you're thinking about gifts for your children or whatever, do buy early because I think we'll probably run into, because of those supply chains, we're going to run into issues where something. It's going to be tickle me Elmo exactly. <laughs> for everything, exactly. even toilet paper. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> tickle me toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> So if you were a new business and you're moving to Wake Forest, what are the things that somebody should set out to do first and foremost? Come to the chamber. Come join the chamber because we can introduce you to who you need to know. Mm -hmm. Whether, no matter what your business is, whether it's selling products or services, 
We can make sure that you know who you need to know. Mm -hmm. We can set up referrals for you. And you can also, as I said earlier, become part of an organization that's bigger than you are. Mm -hmm. I think, especially in today's political climate, it's so important to be the positive one, to join this. I, I say this to every new chamber member, Please join the chamber and the very first thing I would like you to do is find a chamber member that you can help. And it could just be having lunch at someone's restaurant or buying a book from page 158. It's it's going out of your way mm -hmm. to help someone else in the chamber. It could be buying someone coffee and saying, what kind of referrals do you need? I know someone. Mm -hmm. And if you think of you know, 650 businesses and all their employees, and they're all looking for ways to help each other. That karma, that good energy is just exploding across the community. And I've seen it happen time and time again when, when individuals join the chamber and approach it that way, let me see who I can help. Their businesses just blow up exponentially mm -hmm. because everybody's like, oh gosh, you've got to meet this person. Oh yeah, I want to go see this person, yes. yes it, it, and you have that loyalty too. Well, we really do. Yeah. I had a call this morning from uh, a chamber member that, totally unrelated subject, but he said, and by the way, you are you run the best chamber that I've ever been involved with. If there's anything else that we can do for you, please let me know. Boom. And just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, and that's not me, it's the culture that we've created here, the team, but also all of our members. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, people that choose to join a chamber want to be a part of something good and they yeah. want to help other people. And often we don't know what to do. So the chamber provides that uh, opportunity to help fellow business people, and also just anyone in the community. Mm -hmm. We went to one of the networking meetings at night, and just the offhanded comments that you hear, like even when I go to a book conference, mm -hmm. you it's the conversations you have in the hall that are sometimes more meaningful, sure. and you get more out of. And not to say that conferences are bad, because they're wonderful, yeah. but those chamber meetings and the meetups that you have at different businesses all the time really do make a difference in your business, and you're putting your face behind your brand. Exactly. Yeah. It's such a great way for our members. Just and you're our brand for the Chamber of Commerce Awake Forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so proud to be here as well. This has yeah. been probably the hardest job I've ever had in my life, but the most satisfying. Well, you do it with ease and you're very ladylike. No. Okay. How long have you been doing this? Almost five years. That's it? So, yeah. 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 Well, good for you. What did you do before? I was a regional marketing for a big telecom for about 15 years. And before that, in some advertising and PR agencies. So hard things that you actually got you to where you are. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, yeah. it was a great, great experience. But um, I've often said working for a huge company with 40,000 employees, it doesn't matter how great your idea is, somebody always finds a way to say, no, we can't do that. And it's wonderful here at the chamber. If somebody has a great idea, we're like, okay, let's try it. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, oh, well. But yeah. if it does work, look, look what we've accomplished. And... Um, I have to brag just a little bit. Yesterday afternoon, we were on a nationwide uh, summit with the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives. So nationwide, there were about 700 people participating in this online event. And the, the head of the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives was talking about the future of chambers and where we need to go. She pulls up a slide with our logo Woo! and all things that we're doing in our foundation. And we were an example for the entire country. So, That's I awesome. mean, we were just like, I mean, it was a complete surprise. So it is just really, it was so heartening to think we really are on the right track, doing the right things for the right reasons. And our mission is right on target. So um, it was a very proud moment. Very, very good. Yeah. Well, and I can't thank you enough. Please. Where can they reach you if you need help, anybody? Anybody, I'm at Ann, A-N-N, -N, at wakeforestchamber.org, super easy. We're right in downtown Wake Forest, 350 South building. Grand Street, mm -hmm. lovely building. Hats off to the board that bought this building you know, 40 years ago. It used mm -hmm. to be a fire station and it's been renovated and it's now our, our offices. But we're right here next to the Cotton Company, uh, downtown Wake Forest. And so our doors are open. We'd love to meet you, and we'd love to have you join the chamber. If you um, have any interest, reach out to me. And Sue, thank you so much no, for all you do. This is wonderful, and you know what? You'll see Anne morning, noon, and night at shops and restaurants and everything else because she is Wake Forest. Oh, thank you so much, Anne. That's our Meet the Experts this week. Check Anne out at Wake Forest Chamber of Commerce.